In the gate next, Adam Petraska from Chester, Vermont. This is semifinal number one, and he is the first competitor in the knockout format. This is Adam's first event on the AST Tour, and there are a lot of guys competing today that are glad that they haven't seen him earlier because Adam is ripping it up today. Adam eliminated Jonathan Smallwood in quarterfinal number one, and here he is dropping in the pipe at Snow Summit. Adam getting a monster air off the first hit. Now remember, the judges are looking for five things. Number one, standard maneuvers. Number two, rotation, like that 720 that Adam just pulled off. That was two complete rotations. The third judge is looking for amplitude. That's how high the rider gets out of the pipe. The fourth judge, landings. And the fifth is an overall technical merit judge. Well, this is Adam Petraska, and he is putting the judges to the test today. They have got their work cut out for them here at Snow Summit. We'll find out if he's scored high enough to keep him in the knockout format as the Snow Summit Open continues on ESPN. Everybody and welcome to beautiful Southern California. We are here for stop number five of the 1997 Bud Light American Snowboard Tour, the Snow Summit Open, presented by Chevy S10 Pickups. Hello once again, Todd Harris, along with the editor of Snowboarding Online, Lee Crane. Lee, today, the weather, everything, the conditions are aligned. This is an absolutely perfect day. Nothing to complain about today, not a cloud in the sky. The pipe has been perfect because it's been getting cold at night, so it's going to stay together for the whole contest. No problems there. Everything else kicking. All right, let's go right to our Paul Mitchell $27,000 Riders' Cup standings. Our freestyle standings are as follows. Frank Wells, Jeff Rushy, Jonathan Smallwood, Greg Goulet, and in fifth, J.J. Collier. Frank is in the lead now, but we have four more events on the American Snowboard Tour, and with J.J. Collier and Jeff Rushy behind, anything could happen. Also in our cutback segment, we'll have a look at the half-pipe competition that took place earlier this week, plus we'll have a look at the snowboard cross, something you won't want to miss. But right now, let's go back to the top of the pipe. Jamil Khan ready to jump in on his head-to-head -head run against Adam Petraska. Petraska's run already happened. Started out with an incredibly big method air at the top of the pipe. Adam riding well all the way down. Pulls out a straight air front side. You notice he's about four feet out of the pipe, and then he came in with the beautiful 720 degree spin. That's two complete revolutions. Adam score a 38.8. That's what Jamil is going to have to beat if he wants to make it into the finals. So Jamil Khan is looking at that 38.8 and wants to add at least one-tenth of a point so he can move on to the final. This is Jamil Khan from Gloversville, New York. Yeah! Jamil Khan starts out with a frontside air, follows it up with a 720-degree spin. He is definitely trying to beat out Adam on this, adding the big tricks up at the top. Let's see if he can finish it all the way through to the bottom. There's a fakie to fakie 720. Big backside air to finish it off. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. He didn't add enough spins, I don't think. Well, our five judges will start the tabulating. We will go back to the top, Lee, and let's look at this run again. Jamil pulled off a very high 720 degree spin. He gets the stale fish grab in halfway around, goes for a tail grab on the front side wall. Then a stale fish. Those are his two front side wall maneuvers. And Jamil finishes off with a monstrous method air on the backside wall. Well, despite the quality of his tricks, he did not have the variety. And thus, he misses out the final by one tenth of a point. It's Adam Petraska moving on. Next up, it's Teeter against Brushy. And we'll have that right after this. The Bud Light American Snowboard Tour is brought to you by Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. And by Chevy S10 Pickups, like a rock.
Welcome back to Snow Summit California and ESPN's coverage of the Bud Light American Snowboard Tour. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane and one of the highlights from the earlier rounds was our Paul Mitchell points leader, Frank Wells, donning the black jersey. He was going bigger than anyone else in the pipe league. Undeniably, Frank Wells was flying the highest past the Moro altimeter. However, he wasn't riding well enough to squeak past Jamil Khan, who knocked Frank Wells out in the early rounds. Despite not moving on, Frank Wells put on a great show. Unfortunately, the Paul Mitchell Black Riders jersey will trade hands today, and it looks like Jeff Brushy is in line for that. But right now, let's go back to the top of the pipe. Semi-final number two is set to go, and this is Abram Teeter. Abe, another one of the guys that we haven't seen all season. He and Adam Petraska show up here at Snow Summit and dominate. Now he is going head to head against Jeff Brushy. Both of these guys, Vermont locals, Jeff Brushy now living in Southern California, but this is Abram Teeter. Abe, a goofy footer. That means he puts his right foot forward, starts off on the backside wall into a front side air. Notice how high Abe's going. He's going at least five feet out on every hit. That was an alley-oop. Air to fake, he having a little trouble on that one. Into an alley-oop, 540. 360, Abe losing a lot of speed down at the bottom. We'll see if he can pick it up for the judges. Pulls out a 720 degree spin and still has time to flip it around before the finish line. So Abe Teeter goes inverted in front of the judges. He hopes that pays off in big points. He's got a tall order ahead of him. He is going head to head with Jeff Brushy, originally out of Hinesburg, Vermont, now living in Del Mar. Let's go back and have a look at some of Abe Teeter's bigger moves. Abe started out with a monstrous method air, lands it perfectly. Abe had a huge front side, followed it up with a fresh fish a very large top half of the pipe. He did lose speed at the bottom, but the judges appear to have not docked him for that. Well, he got a 38.1, so that is the mark for Jeff Brushy. Definitely doable for this guy. He is world class, and he is dropping into the pipe. If the judges are scoring for big air today, then Jeff Brushy shouldn't have any problem, because like Frank Wells, he's been boosting all day long. Look at the distance he carries down the pipe, and he is carrying a ton of speed, Lee. The problem with the speed is that the faster you go, the fewer hits you can make. Hopefully Jeff will be able to slow it down. And he pulls out a huge McTwist into a 540. Jeff mixing the tricks up right in front of the judges. So much speed, almost didn't get the hand plant down. And he did it right in front of the judges, as you pointed out, Lee. And I think safe to say Jeff Rushy will be moving on to the final. Jeff had a little trouble on that first hit. He wasn't sure what he wanted to do, a little air confusion but he pulled it together toward the bottom of the pipe. Then he lined it up with a super long slob, grabbing with the front side, landed that beautifully. And then the picture perfect McTwist, 540 degrees inverted in front of the judges and Jeff Rushy gets a 39.9. That means he's gonna advance into the finals against Adam Petraska. That 39.9, the highest score of the day and in the consolation final will be Jamil Khan and Abe Teeter. Right now, let's go and have a look at the women's half pipe highlights. In the first Snow Summit Halfpipe event, eight women would compete in the final, taking two runs each. The highest two-run total would determine the champion. Trisha Burns would take control in the first run. Her 33.0 would be the highest score of the women's event. She was followed closely by Orly Sayers in second and Yeni Vara in third, while fourth through seventh all sat less than three points off the lead. In run number two, Orly Sayers did better than Trisha Burns, but Trisha's combined scores would be enough to keep her on top. Yeah, I was lucky because Orly was just one tenth behind me, so it was pretty close, and I kind of thought I got second, so it's a nice surprise, I guess. <laughs> Christy Elder, winner of the June Mountain half pipe, would jump from fifth after run one to third, and Jamie McLeod from seventh to fourth gaining her enough points to take the Paul Mitchell Writers' Cup bib from an absent Athena. The second event brought us back to the knockout format of the same names, the consolation finals between Jamie McLeod, the new Paul Mitchell leader, and Trisha Burns. Trisha would win the exchange to take third. 
The final featured Orly Sayers and Swedish competitor Jenny Vara in a very tight contest, only four tenths of a point being the difference between first and second place. Orly Sayers takes the win with a big McTwist. I was just thinking that uh, anything could happen even if you don't go for it. Like you'd still catch an edge on normal air, and so I just decided to go for it anyways. <laughs> We'll be back to Snow Summit, California for our men's consolation final. Welcome you back to Snow Summit California and ESPN's coverage of the Bud Light American Snowboard Tour, the Snow Summit Open. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane, and we are into the men's consolation final. This is Abe Teeter. Teeter will face Jameel Khan, and he is set to roll. Pipe's really sick. You can go off. You can show your stuff today. It's not like, I don't know, sometimes you get king pipes. You can't do everything you want. You can't show your style. So it's really sick here. And the weather couldn't be better than this. Obviously, Abe having a good day in the pipe today. He said it was perfect. He has been boosting higher than anyone who's made it into the final rounds. Of course, we saw earlier that Frank Wells is no longer in the competition, but look at that backside air. Abe Teeter going easily seven feet out. So this is the battle for third and fourth. Abe Teeter definitely wanted to get on the podium today. A long, hard day of work in the pipe, and he's wanted to see it pay off. Slider. Abe throwing the 360, and he washes at the bottom of the pipe, starts losing speed. You could see in his mind that he wanted to pull something out, but he just wasn't able to. Pulls out that 540 at the end, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Abe Teeter really loses his momentum at the bottom of the pipe, a bit on the slow side, and stalls out right at the deck. That leaves the door wide open for Jameel Khan out of Gloversville, New York. Now, this guy is very capable of going huge, and I know he felt like he should have advanced, but going back to this run by Abe Teeterly, he started out great at the top and then just fizzled. Abe looked solid, some big amplitude on those first two hits, but then halfway down the pipe, you could see him starting to fall apart, and by the finish, it was over, so Jameel needs to turn in a solid run, and he will get that third spot if he can hold it together. Abe Teeter picked up a 37.6, so that is the mark that Jameel Khan is now looking at. Jameel doing the same run we saw him do earlier. Starts out with a frontside air into a 540 spin. An air to fakey, about four feet out. Now here's the critical portion. This is where Abe started having problems, and Jameel is boosting even higher at the bottom of the pipe. Going for a spin, and he ends up with a tail wheelie through the finish. We'll see what the judges have to say. I think it looks solid enough to move him forward into third spot. Jameel Khan looking very good at the bottom of the pipe. Remember, Teeter's score at 37.6, and Jameel rock solid the whole way through. See that frontside air to fake each. Jameel mixed the tricks up. He got the amplitude, and he gets a score of 38.8. That means he just nailed down the third position right here at the Snow Summit Pipe. Well, before we move on any farther, we are going to go back and have a look at the first half-pipe competition here at Snow Summit. J.J. Collier was the man to beat in half-pipe number one at Snow Summit. J.J. was the number one qualifier coming into the 16-man two-run final. Unfortunately for J.J., five riders would finish run number one ahead of him. Paul Mitchell points leader Frank Wells and Jameel Khan would tie in run one with 36.9 points each, while J.J. Thomas, Abe Teeter, and Frank Neck finished above the 36-point mark as well. In run number two, J.J. Collier posted a 37.2, the highest score of the contest, giving him a combined total of 73, a score that no one was able to touch until the other J.J., J.J. Thomas, left the gate. An ultra-smooth and consistent set of runs would move him into the lead by five-tenths of a point. Hi, 
vibe was super good today. The, both walls were really consistent. So you could pretty much do what you wanted, when you wanted. It's a good half by him. So it's a very young J.J. Thomas pulling out the win here at Snow Summit, California, and I'm sure we'll see more of him. Our final results look like this. J.J. Thomas, J.J. Collier, Jameel Khan, Seth Westcott, and Matthew Cast. But it is Frank Wells who retains the leader's jersey. Half-pipe action wasn't the only dish on the menu. This stop also included some insane heats of snowboard cross action. After several heats of mayhem, the field was whittled down to the finals. In the women's final, Martina Scrim, Yeni Vara, Marguerite Cosatini, and Jennifer Sorowski battled for top honors in the women's division. But it was Marguerite Cosatini who took the lead and never looked back. The men's final featured Jake Blattner, Dan Adams, Tor Bruiserin, Bjorn Linus, Jason Toth, and Paul Henderson. Seemed like through the first bumps, I'd try and speed Ollie to get some extra speed and ended up in first place in the first three turns and tried to catch an edge. I've been trying to catch an edge. The board pulled, pulled through for me today and it's kind of scary to hear people chasing behind you, you know, and just try to keep a straight line. Then the last section right there picked up speed and I heard people coming, so I laid her back, just prayed and laid. Congratulations to Paul Henderson winning the Snow Summit Snowboard Cross. Hotel accommodations provided by the Big Bear Inn, Big Bear Lake, California. These are the guys in the know at Snow Summit. This is Chris Gunnerson, director of snowboarding. Behind him, Jeremiah Pebley, and this is Brandon Stein. These are the guys. Now, guys, what can you tell me about this fine park? Well, we can tell you all kinds of things, Todd, but we'd rather just take a run and show you. Excellent. Let's do it. Well, here the main park is uh, Westridge. It's top to bottom. It's serviced by Chair 2, which is a high-speed quad. But branching off from Westridge, we also have East Y, which is kind of a, a beginner, almost mini freestyle park. Lot, just a fun bunch of different lines through there, little hits, uh, hips, all different stuff. We've got two half pipes, one full-size competition pipe. And Westridge, again, is top to bottom. And then we've got Zyzix that branches off. That has the smaller pipe at the top and feeds into kind of a border cross bank turns and snakes and it's got a big quarter pipe hip at the bottom so realistically we got one two three three runs that are just for the park and uh one run that's just for half pipe we have made it down to the final of the snow summit half pipe competition it is jeff brushy going head to head with adam petraska and adam petraska will take his run first Adam having a wonderful day today, his first AST event, and he is right here in the finals against a former World Halfpipe champion, Jeff Brushy. We'll see if he can survive under the pressure. Adam rock solid so far, doing the straight airs, normal maneuvers, pulls into a 720 midway through the pipe. A good mix of tricks so far. He's going to have a solid run if he can hold it together. Oh, hanging up on the well, deck. Just when you said that, Lee Crane, Adam Petraska goes down hard on the deck, and that is going to cost him. He had a great run going into that. What happened? It could have been the pressure. I know a lot of times he made it through the top five hits, no problem at all, and he might have seen that finish line coming a little early and relaxed just for a split second, and that's all it takes in half-pipe competition. We see his first hit. A perfect method air, about four feet out of the pipe, very solid at the top. But when he came into his second 720, you could see him stand up a little. His momentum carried him out onto the deck, and he couldn't pull it back in for the landing on the transition. 
and it pretty much ended it for Adam Petraska. His score from the judge is a 37.8. So Jeff Brushy has to shoot above the 37.8. Definitely possible for the brush. Actually, that 37, a pretty high score for, for a slam right on the deck and out into the bottom. Jeff's just going to need to hold it together, put in a solid run, and he should be able to win this thing. So far, so good. Again, Jeff Rushy carrying a huge amount of speed through the pipe. We'll see if he throws the big tricks down at the bottom. Brush goes for that McTwist like we saw him do in the semis. Throws in a 540 with a grab. Hand plant out of the finish. I think that might do it for Jeff Brushy at Snow Summit. Well, Jeff Brushy found a great line, a great routine in the semifinals that worked for him. He just carried it over into the final. Looks like he refined it just a bit. Remember, he lost the Paul Mitchell leader's jersey at June Mountain, and I think he might claim it back today. Jeff started off with the trademark backside air first hit. He does that all the time. Sometimes he goes higher than he did in this run, but I think he was just trying to ease it on in. A nice slob air. Then Jeff pulled out the McTwist and his score of 40.3, the highest score of the day, guaranteeing Jeff Brushy the top spot on the podium. When we come back, we'll have a word from our champion as we wrap things up from Snow Summit, California. Stay with us. The Bud Light American Snowboard Tour has been brought to you by Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. And by Paul Mitchell, professional salon hair care products. And welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the 1997 Bud Light American Snowboard Tour presented by Chevy S10 Pickups, the Snow Summit Open. Todd Harris along with Lee Crane moments ago, the man was crowned, and the winner this time, Jeff Brushy. Out of Del Mar, California, he takes home the top prize here at Snow Summit, California. We want to go to our leaderboard and show you the final results. It's Jeff Brushy, Adam Petraska, Jamil Khan, Abe Teeter, and Jonathan Smallwood. Let's have a look at the Paul Mitchell standings. There's a change of an authority. Jeff Brushy, by virtue of his win today, moves back out in front of the Paul Mitchell $25,000 leaderboard. He is followed by Frank Wells and J.J. Collier. Taught him with the winner of the Snow Summit Half Pipe Competition, Jeff Brushy. Jeff, you had a couple squeakers with that hole in the wall and everything, but you pulled through. Yeah, yeah. It, it was weird. I mean, I came here this morning, and I, didn't ha I, I couldn't get a run together. I'm not an early person or something. And uh, finally, I just dropped in my first contest run and came up with that run, and I just kept doing it. And luckily, towards the end of the finals, I started doing like higher McTwists and higher air, so because I, I got used to it, so kind of lucked out. <laughs> Your last run was the highest scoring run. How'd you keep it all together so you could pull it out for the last run? I don't know. It was really getting sketchy too. It, the, the pipes getting hard and bumpy, but I felt like you could go down any time, but. I pulled it together. <laughs> Jeff Brushy certainly did pull it together here at Snow Summit and walks home with the championship. Todd, back to you. Thank you, Lee, and that will conclude stop number five of the Bud Light American Snowboard Tour, the Snow Summit Open, presented by Chevy S10 Pickups. We want to congratulate our winners in the half-pipe competition. For the men, it was Jeff Rushy. For the women, Orly Sayers. And that takes us to the final stop of the 1997 Tour, the North American Championships from Mount Snow, Vermont. Check your local listings. For Lee Crane, I'm Todd Harris. We'll see you next time right here on ESPN.